Isn't it going? Doesn't it say? When I hit stop, it's like transferring to server. So maybe it's just super delayed. We may have to delete some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, the phones aren't storing anything. Just this one is. Yeah, just, I mean, I on think. YouTube. Yeah, I think so, too. I think they're just using the... Yeah. The with it. This is storing all the data. Okay, so... All right. You had an intro song, or just... Oh, no, that's later. Go ahead and do the... Uh, you wouldn't mind. <sighs> We're not going to hear the music in the live stream, but whatever. Eventually, we'll, uh, eventually, it'll, come, it'll all come together. How you doing? Doing well. How are you? Just fine. Welcome to the podcast for empathy and imagination. My name is Aubrey. And I am Drew Clark. Thank and you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're trying our hand at live streaming today, and it's quite a shit fest. <laughs> <laughs> but it's getting better you know one of these days it's going to be great but right now it's really fucking janky so hopefully you can see this uh, the idea is that this is uh, you can look at what we're doing yes we have uh, Drew's face there, hey and we have me super laggy <laughs> And the wider. Uh, yeah, so we're on YouTube. Uh, Empathy and Imagination is the name of the channel on YouTube. Check us out. We're on iTunes slash Empathy and Imagination. And you can support us by going to patreon.com, Empathy and Imagination, and, you know, throw in a couple bucks. Support independent creators creating content for you. Thank you. Yes, please. That lamp's about to fall over behind you. Yeah. It's like attached to a <laughs> chair or something. It was getting out of my business. I had to scoot out of the way. Okay, cool. Cool. Wow. So, immediately, holy cow, what a freaking mountain to climb to try to get these yeah. old road-hardened iPhones that were just... Uh, either broke partially or were donated from a friend. Uh -huh. And now we have these several iPhones pointing at us on ragtag iPhone stands. Yes, ragtag iPhone stands, older <laughs> iPhones that are broken. One is shit, like <laughs> sort of, it's been filed down on the back because it got, we took it on a bike trip and uh, it fell off the bike and then it hit the brakes and it got caught under the tire and skidded. And so part of the back is sheared off, um, but still functional though, still functional. And that's part of, uh, part of one of our Patreon goals is we want to sort of upgrade our internet connection. We want to be able to upgrade eventually. So, you know, if you value independent creators on the internet, uh, you know, go to patreon.com, empathy imagination, chip in a couple bucks, not to delay, belabor the point, but, uh, it's a great um, it's a great way to support people who you believe in I'm, I'm supporting some people there mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's a really cool way to uh, support creators I think they take like five or seven percent so it's there's still a middleman but it's pretty pretty seamless it seems like a pretty good channel I hear a lot of people I listen to using the patreon channel for a way to help support art people like. I think Jordan Peterson has one. Sam Harris. Sam. Does he have one? I believe so. Okay. Um, yeah, some other guys. Sam Hyde, Million Dollar Extreme. 
Charles Carroll, The Dick Show. Um, yeah, so here we are, Gradient Studios, Crockett, mm -hmm. California. I almost said Crockett, Massachusetts for some reason. But instead why. we are in this sunny slash rainy slash sunny Crockett, California. Yeah, and we set up a Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi out here kind of sucks, so we... Oh, it's, it sucks completely. It sucks completely. We made it less sucky, but still kind of sucky. Yeah, so it appears to be working. We took a ra bought a range extender, put it on the end of a telescoping pool pole, pool brush pole, zip-tied that to a fence post, and so there's like a Wi-Fi extender hooked up to a, an extension cord 10 feet in the air seems to work pretty well. It seems like it is working. It seems like it is working. So, let's get into the show. Okay. What do we got? We got some you know, topics you got topic? today. I do, I do have a topic. Um, we got a Sounds Good. Okay. We've uh, we've got uh, and perhaps a an Aubrey story if there's if there's time, and maybe uh, I got some stuff yeah and and and, and uh, perhaps we can also check in with political realities briefly. I don't mm. want to take over, mm -hmm. but I do, and that's part of the point is maybe there's a there's a moderation of time one could one would spend consuming that information. Maybe it wouldn't be like six hours a day. Maybe it'd be like one hour a day. Who knows? Anyway. One hour a day of political talk? Yeah. Like, don't not do it, but if it's like your whole waking life, that's something to notice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you have a... Yeah, I do. I have another topic. Topic? Okay, so... This topic is it's kind of like a psychological topic. Huh. And it's something that has me be reminded of my mortality, as our listeners know, I got an eye problem I told the listeners about. Oh, yeah. Did, did you, you ever hear about that? Yeah. I you know, went to the eye doctor. I did. Last week, Sunday. They said I'm okay, right? Good. And I think, I'm not sure if I Good shared news. this, I might have. Um... They said that it'll go away on its own, and it's caused by stress. Really? Yes. Stress. Stress. C cortisol causes it. Cortisol is a stress hormone that humans <laughs> use to get them ready for exciting events. But there's just so many exciting events. There's like tigers every ten feet. So, what is uh, what was stressing? What do you think is stressing you out the most that caused it? Uh, I would definitely say there's like this myriad of things. There are just there there are opportunities as well as stressors, like um, being sued, trying to find a place to be married, mm. not making enough money to survive. Also, what do I do with gradient? The, I think there's those the are dream? some things. Yeah. Like dream what, what's next? Park? What's the next step if there is one, or yeah, yeah. So, or what else is there that takes its place? So I think those are some things that have been stressful and have caused like a, just like an overboiling. Hmm. And I was, I wasn't feeling as stressed. I mean, I definitely have felt stressed before. Probably I thought more than I was feeling now. But I guess... You didn't feel like you were that stressed. I didn't. I, w I was like, you know, th this is a pretty stress... There's a lot of stressful moments I can definitely like count to add up to something like my eye. Putting some mm -hmm. fluid in it, which would distort my vision temporarily. From stress. Well, so, I'm glad it's not like, uh, you know, melanoma or something. Yeah. Me too. I'm extra happy just... and I'm not going to die right now. You're done, basically, if you have eye cancer. Yeah. 
because I guess it gets into your liver. Oof. And once it gets into your liver, um, that's pretty much it. Well, good news. Good news. Cool. It's Quiet. not serious. I'm okie doke. I just need to chill the fuck out. So Don't I'm trying to. All? I'm trying to figure out how I do a lot of stress relieving things. I ride my bike. Mm-hmm. I do little tiny bits of meditation. I do. Um, I exercise with the dog. Hiking. Social going to, social I intercourse. Lots of social intercourse with people. I'm always talking and meet new people. <laughs> right? Yeah. Lots of things are in place to have me be pretty balanced, and still my eye exploded. Hmm. So, that's like. Topic. So it's like you know. basic needs. Basic yeah. Needs of the need for security maybe is not being met as much as it could be. Yeah, in the sense that I don't make enough money to live. Yeah. So it's that could like be stressful. Yeah. So every month we're sort of sliding further down this hole. Mm. And. Patreon dot com. Patreon dot com. <laughs> yeah. So, like, for example, if, if I could earn some sort of an income from this, I would pour so much more time. We'd do it, we'd do it way more, probably. Oh, yeah, yeah. Probably, like, double it. Any Patreon money, I mean, you know, is it's almost spoken for already, because we're, we got a pretty janky setup, and <laughs> yeah. if we could pay the cost of the studio rent, and internet, the Wi-Fi, yeah. like, switcher, and yeah. switcher subscription. Mm-hmm. And that maybe would, some beer? That would be pretty awesome. Huh? And, uh, you know, I practice what I preach because I do support people on Patreon. And, uh, you know, the other, there's other ways to support us. If you can't uh, pitch in money, which I understand, not everyone can, you can rate us on iTunes, maybe leave a positive review. That helps us out, too. And uh, maybe spread the word. Check yeah. us out on Facebook, too, yeah. Empathy and Imagination. So it's a repost, if you would. Yeah, yeah. give us a repost. Anyway. Thank you. This this episode is brought to us by us promoting ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Feels necessary. It does feel necessary occasionally. Final Corp, you know, they don't give us much money. No, it's very little. In fact, zero. Yeah. Because Final Corp doesn't exist. So well, they, they actually say we owe them money, which is weird. <laughs> right. So we've been uh, slandering them for 34 episodes now. But how... I think this is episode 34. How... But... Okay, well... Yeah, but we do so much promotion for them, so why wouldn't they pay? They say we, do, we owe we them. We talk, we talk a lot of shit about them, too, though. Yeah. But I think they know that. Okay. So, what do you got for topics? Okay. So, the existential thing I was we rambled off from earlier is the top ten animals that kill humans. Huh. Can I guess first? Yeah. You can okay. totally guess. And actually, you can win a prize. Human. You could you guess the top ten, right? Yeah, I'll say number one. Well, we'll no, take, no, we'll, I'll take a couple of guesses. Here's the thing: you could you could take several guesses, okay. and I basically know. And then yeah, so and several jokes. So right, go ahead. Number one, probably human. The human animal. That's probably not on there though, because they don't mm-hmm. really mean that. So I would say, uh, Dumbledore. Smog. Um, no. Okay. Ooh, be cool if we could have this be. You can you can do that with switcher. I think you can have um, this be a corn like a sub shot or something. Yeah. I think okay, can, we're getting you there. Can screen cast to the live stream. I think I'm not sure. Cool, because I yeah I could I or even from a some. from the pad iPad. Okay, all right. All right, so let's see. I'm going to say kill humans. Now, is it just is it ju- just mammals or is it No, any life any forms? any non-human animal. Uh, okay. Let's say like I'm just going to put a couple out there. So cu- yeah, yeah. and I I'm going to say I'll mosquitoes. It's going to be one of them. Um Black bear. I guess bear. They are freaking brutal. Bear. And I mean, what are you know, 
What else you got, man? What? Give me like two more. How many? Okay, we're talking about. I'm trying I, to I'm think about of the numbers. I'm trying to think like everyone says sharks, but my guess is that sharks don't actually kill that many people. Okay, so you you talk about mosquitoes, to think. bears, and sharks. Mosquitoes, bear. Yeah, let's say sharks. Mosquitoes, bears, sharks, and. I mean, you could talk. You could say bacteria, right? But I'm not going to say that. Yeah. Um, bulls. Hmm. Because of the. Bam. Barcelona. Wow. Bull run. So, what do you got? Um, you do first it? off, round of applause, actually. For what? Because you fucking nailed. Your guesses. Thank you. Thank you very much. You seriously, you couldn't have hit a better average with, uh, with what you're doing there. Yeah, man, mosquitoes is fucking number one. Is it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so because they just they suck b- blood, and when they suck blood from you, they inject like a mild anesthetic. Right, and then suck your blood out. So they're constantly, like, transferring bits of blood from one person to another. Oh yeah, and they're, they're and fucking... anim- one animal to another. They're constantly just breeding <laughs> fucking disease. Oy. All right, there's disease straws. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so yeah, check it. Humans are currently on the top of the world's food chain. But we should not let our dominant status lull us into a false sense of security. It's still a jungle out there. And this has been so since the time immortal. Mm. Our genes still carry the genetic memory of fear of huge animals, probably left over from the times our ancestors were chased by saber toothed cats and wolves. Can I just On the other reject? side of many animals, out there still carry the genetic memory of feasting on some of our unfortunate predecessors. Let's also not forget, most of the animals we see are either the ones on our plate or the ones we domesticate. Many animals out there still have the wild in them. Yeah. So what are the top ten animals that kill humans? My guess, too, is that we were, we were once prey for giant reptiles. I think Jordan Peterson talks about that. What do you mean? Um, Tell me more. Like, I'm not talking about dinosaurs. I think there might have been crossover, but very little. Um, just being hunted by, like, giant reptilian, like, raptors like, and shit. Like dinosaurs and humans co-mingling, co-murdering? Yeah, I don't know if it's really dinosaur per se, but... That's just a guess. We don't like snakes. Yeah, well, I like snakes. But, not but all snakes. most people are scared of snakes. Most people are scared of snakes. And there's a lot of stories. So the Komodo snakes. dragon will still kill a human right now. Oh yeah, those are like big. Yeah, they can uh, they can run down a horse. Those are like big. They can totally run down a horse. Huh. So I don't know. You know, I don't know about dinosaurs and humans co-murdering, huh. but yeah, I don't know either. But. Um... I don't know if that's true. It, just, well, what, what it does that? seem like we were once prey for predators. Oh, definitely. Dude, sure. we, were, we were part of the the food chain, and then we kind of climbed out of the food chain. We think. With our, that's what we feel with our brains. With our big-ass brains. Yeah, our big calorie-consuming brains. And we our, were like, oh, wait, we can just make tools and fences. And our talons shrunk. Mm-hmm. We don't have great strength. We don't our have skins for armor. touching. Mm-hmm. We're just totally weak bags of water. Squishy bags of water with a big ass brain. We can build bridges and AK forty sevens, but and rocket ships. All else, uh, all being equal, meeting a saber toothed tiger in the field. Yeah, probably gonna get your ass kicked. Big time. There was uh, a story a couple of years ago about a guy who killed a lion. Bare hands. What yeah, a human so, man. Yeah. Adult line? Africa. Maybe he had a spear too, but I think he just like ripped its throat out. Wow. I think he got injured, but yeah, he was a badass and just 
Whoa. Because it was threatening the village or something. Who knows what's true anymore and shit. Dude, is news real? Consult Lord Google for everything, right? Well, there's also other search engines, you know. Maybe we... Yeah, Bing. Maybe Bing it would be cool com. to use other search engines sometimes. I think there'd be... Uh, if not less bubble, there'd be at least two bubbles of a uh, reverb loop, you know. That might differ slightly. There is DuckDuckGo. You heard of that? Mm-mm. I don't know about GoDaddy. <laughs> okay. DuckDuckGo is another search engine, and I think... God, I forget what they do, but I think they aggregate results from all the other search engines, and they don't do the pay-for-play game. So you can't, like, pay to get... There's no sponsored links. I've never used it. I, well, I just why use not? Google, because it's Lord Google. Lord Google knows anyway. the truth. So, yeah, let's hear this list when you get a chance. Okay. That would be cool. Number 10, dude. Bears. Number 10, Bears. There are only all... eight species of bear in the world, and all of them really? can kill humans. Forget the cuddly teddy bears you used to have as a child. Real bears are huge. What about Hulks gay? of muscle, teeth, and claws. They what can run fast bears? and have surprised many campers because they can climb up trees fast, too. Bears do not go out of their way to attack humans, but will also not think huh. twice about charging a human who trespasses on their territory yeah, or no. threatens their young. Busy. An average of five to ten people a year are killed in encounters with bears. Five to ten a, a mm-hmm. year? Mm-hmm. Wow. Five to ten people are they, killed. They don't by take bears any shit, basically. They'll just murder they're you. They're not gonna so go easily. out of the way out of their way, but they're gonna kill you if you fuck them. Don't fuck with them. Do they use hammocks? Bears? Do they climb trees? I don't know if bears use hammocks. I, I think, you know, if they could, I bet they would. Like an 800-pound load-bearing <laughs> hammock. You would need, like, uh, some like toe straps for, like, doolies, you know. I mean, it would have to be big time. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But we could build that. I mean, you could that's, make a bear hammock. I mean, that's a lot of... I guess that's not bad. Percentage-wise, that's not many deaths, but... It seems like a lot. Ten per year. Mm-hmm. Almost once a month, someone's getting just mauled. Like six inch fucking claws. Razor claws cutting into your chest and cut, like cutting your flesh open like it's warm butter mm-hmm. in August out that's been outside and then they swipe it onto a piece of bread and you know, you just toast. They probably eat a little bit of that too. Yeah. Well, they might on. taste it. It depends. I guess it depends on the bear. Yeah. How hungry they were, you know? Yeah. Some bears don't eat humans when they kill them. Some do, mm. right? So bears, the thing is about bears yeah. is they've been on the planet as long as we have. So they've been evolving, quote, for as long as we have. So we've evolved the brain, but they've evolved in other ways. So the thing is, that's still going on. Mm. So we think we're the evolvist, then other things are evolving too. So that's like a thing I like to think about there. Did you ever see that movie... Grizzly Man? I think so. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> would you, would, you know, yeah. Just a, a guy who sort of thinks that he has some kind of special relationship with these bears. Oh. And he ends up just getting killed by a bear. Timothy Treadwell. I think I hear the, I think I hear someone saying, well, hold on, but he was only killed by the bear because... It was a mistake, and the bears loved him mostly. And it was like, if you tried again, if one day, it would be fine. No. I, hear, I hear someone saying that. What do you say to that? I say that's not reality. That's a delusion. Nature is essentially a, a contest of murder on a giant compost heap. Hmm. That's what the earth is. Nature is just raw death and reproduction and just a marathon of murder, death, and cycle of life. Well, that's pretty bleak, though. Well, I mean, it, it's bleak if you think that's bleak. I mean, things, I think it's bleak. things have to die in order for other things to live. That's the whole compost. Okay. Uh-huh. Only, only because things die is the soil rich enough for new things to grow, right? So... 
That's what I think. Fair yeah. enough. You Especially know, raw it, nature. If you're in the Amazon forest, it's just a murder fest. I mean, it's also a birth a birth fest, but it's it's just it's like shitting and, and dying and constant. fucking. Yeah. And... There's no like. There's no philosophy. There's no science. It's just raw. Str- everything is just struggling as hard as it possibly can. It's like pure instinct world. Yeah, it is pure instinct world. And it's hard for humans to relate to that. Because we're so in our heads. Okay, huh. cool. Ten. Number is, nine. Ten is the bear. You win on that. You get a point. Uh, ready? Uh-huh. Sharks. Really? Mm-hmm. Around so they s- kill more than bears. More per year than mm-hmm. bears. All right. Check this yeah, out. Okay. According to the richest top ten animals that kill humans, around 75 people around the world Around 75 people around the world are attacked by sharks each year. Of that number, an average of 5 to 10 of these sharks are fatal. The species of shark held responsible for most attacks is the great white shark, Mm -hmm. which ranges in habitat from the coastlines of South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, California, to Alaska, the East Coast, and the Gulf Coast of the USA, Hawaii, South America, the Mediterranean Sea, West Africa to Scandinavia, Japan, in the eastern coastline of China and southern Russia. Coming in second in terms of attacks on humans is the tiger shark, followed by the bull shark. Those seeking to protect sharks from overfishing by humans still insist the the chances of people getting killed by a shark are overall still less than their chances of dying in a plane crash or getting hit by lightning. Wow. So the the white great white shark is the worst. Yeah, you know it's probably that. Is worst the right word though? It's more like I mean, not worst, but you can't blame them. We're just lucky killer. that we're we're lucky we're on the water, man. I think it's I think it's white privilege. Well, it's great white privilege. <laughs> I think it's great white privilege. You oh really got to check it. Hmm. Okay. 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 Uh, you have a story I'm about sharks? Again, again, I'm not a great white supremacist. <laughs> <laughs> sharks. <laughs> well, how do you feel about sharks? I mean, they're, they're again, they're just raw predators. Have you ever been near a they're shark? They're the alpha of the sea, really. Mm. No, I've never done the shark in the cage thing or anything like that. Um, Aquarium shark? Yeah, those are little sharks, though, right? They're like tiger sharks. Well, some aquariums have big sharks. The tiger sharks are the striped ones, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've never seen a great white in person. I don't think I've seen a great white in person. I think it would they, be cool, though. Seen tiger shark in person. To do the cage thing, piece of meat. Oh, to go in there. And then just, like, flip off the, <laughs> the shark when it uh. comes to your cage. Wow. So, so bears and sharks have about the same kill count. Yeah. Per year, five to ten. Well, uh, seventy-five actually. Sh- uh, sharks, seventy-five people around the world are attacked by sharks each year. Oh, about five to ten are fatal. Oh, so, I see. but they're more. Um, they're, there's more attacks. Yeah, but it's about the same fatality rate. Damn. Okay. Okay. I just kind of noticed that the connection to the server was interrupted, but it's still recording. So. Okay. We'll just upload this later, I guess. Yeah, well, so maybe it's live and maybe it isn't. Who, we'll, not? who, not? who knows? Who not? Who knows? We can't tell. Anyway, cool. number eight, you uh, Cape Buffalo. Huh. The Cape Buffalo. and Stampeding and goring people? What? Yeah, so it's the guy like this that's got the uh, huh. the curly hair horns guy. He thinks he's super cool. And he is. There's a lot of him, though. So, check it. Yeah, the buffalo... Are coming back. I'm making a comeback. Cape buffalo are quite heavy, weighing in at 1.5 tons and Jesus. stand tall at 1.7 meters high what? and approximately 2.8 meters long. Like five feet high. When these animals feel that they are in danger, they attack head on using their extremely sharp horns. Most animals will keep away. Humans, on the other hand, are the only predator that the Cape buffalo yes. will come across. Do-do. Statistically, Cape buffalo are responsible for more human deaths in Africa than any other large animal. In Africa? Mm-hmm. That's where they reside? Yeah. That's where they kick us. Damn. 
Do, and they just stampede you and knock you over. And, and then stab you, you and then stamp on you. And they they weigh you. Wait, wait, wait. 1.5 tons? Are you fucking... 3,000 pounds. 1.7 meters? That's like... That's almost six feet. Yeah. Five foot high. <laughs> 3,000 pounds. <laughs> Ooh, that's a big guy. <laughs> Gotta lose some weight, man. Gotta get oh. on the treadmill. Oh, my gosh. It's buffalo. <laughs> They're constantly running. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> So uh, I think we need another sound effect. I didn't get that one. So. Okay. So number seven, jellyfish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. The man of war, Portuguese man of war. Every year, millions of people swim in the sea, the domain of the jellyfish. Every year, about a hundred or so people die from jellyfish stings. Currently, the most dangerous species to humans is the box jellyfish of Australia. Hmm. Its tentacles have stingers that can pump venom into human skin, causing pain and discomfort at first. Fever and death usually follows. Unfortunately for humans, poisonous jellyfish do not invade beaches all year round. They are seasonal creatures, however, when they are around, and in large numbers, local lifeguard services usually close off beaches. Wow. You, can, you can't really even see them, too. About a hundred or so people die every year. Just another reason Jellyfish. To, just another reason to not go to the beach. <laughs> Take your vacation somewhere else, like in the mountains where a grizzly bear can attack you. Just take your vacation on Mars. It's way safer. Yeah. Or an asteroid. Way per safer. Permanent vacation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Number six. Okay. Deer. Hmm. Huh. That's, While deer have antlers surprising. that can fatally gore a man... Most deaths caused by deer are due to accidents on the highways. Oh, deer that yeah, cross yeah. highways are often transfixed by vehicle headlights and freeze in place. This often leads to collisions along lonely stretches of highway in the U.S. and other parts of the world. Where there are deer, it is estimated 120 people are killed by deer every year. Like you're on a motorcycle they, and you hit a deer, oh, right, you're fucking right. dead. I was going to say because you swerve and then hit a tree. That too. I've never hit a deer. I think I I hit something one time. I don't know what it was. One time we hit a cow. Yeah. Way back from a basketball game in the, in the coach's minivan. And we <laughs> slammed into a cow. It was so foggy in Don Pedro. You need like a Ram 350 for that. You need a Ram 350 for that. With a big old, you know, bumper on it. Big, yeah, bumper. Cool. Wow. Just hitting a deer kills even in 120 your people. Yeah, you'd think like fences or something, but they would go around the fences. Man, they can jump super high and yeah, just run jump, really hop right time. over it. Huh. You know, it's just really should we? It's the question of like, well, would it? Wouldn't it be cool if there was an alternative to having highways go through their land? Wouldn't it be cool if we could, like, use drones, point-to-point, -point, autonomous drones? Right, right, something that doesn't even threaten the deer. Right, just maybe maybe it would be cool if we drove somewhere else. Teleportation, exactly. So, but also, I think a couple of deer murder humans with their, like, horns <laughs> and claws a year. Mm. I don't think the statistics Hoops. are separate, but I'm going to go ahead and posit that I think... I think that hooves and horns probably crush the skulls of maybe five people a year. Mm. Okay. Okay. Okay, number five. Uh, hippopotamus. Huh. Hippopotamus. Wow. Where are they hanging out? Africa, mm. other places. 
These docile looking water going mammals are actually very vicious when provoked. Marking territory and defending their young, initially thought of as vegetarians, scientists were shocked to see them munch on meat when the situation was dire. They have also filmed a hippo eating crocodiles killed from territorial disputes and other uh, and also an, another one feasting on an antelope stolen away from a crocodile. So, okay, so they, don't, they don't kill meat themselves. They, like, pilfer meat from others. Mm-hmm. Hippos have huge incisors that can fatally gore other animals and humans. While they are bred for the water, they have no problems on land and have been known to run up to 30 miles per hour what? pursuing really? enemies even outrunning humans, the biggest of them can grow up to weigh up to three tons. In Africa, it is estimated that some 2,900 people a year are killed by fucking hippos. 2,900 people a year are murdered by hippopotamus violence. <laughs> Think about 2,900. How many is that a day? What is that? Well, that's... Uh, what, 200 a month? Around more than 200 a month. Yeah. So it's like eight, seven or eight a day. So. Wait, what? It's that much? It's 2,900? <laughs> so, yeah. Per year? So then during the podcast, at least one hippo will murder a human being. Yeah. Maybe it'll come in through the window and disrupt our live stream. You never know. If a, if a hippopotamus jumped through the window, interrupting the live stream and maimed us, that would be a very popular live stream. It would go viral. Yeah. It would go viral. Uh, we'd be dead, mm-hmm. but we'd be famous, yeah. so it's all worth it. It's all worth it. Fame is worth it, always. <laughs> okay. Number okay. four. <laughs> Number four. We're applying empathy and imagination. Okay, here we go. Crocodiles. You called that one, didn't you? No. I thought you did. No. You said big reptiles, man. Yeah. You, well. I mean, crocodiles. Okay. I mean, I'll give myself a point, sure. Crocodiles. These beasts can grow up to terrifying lengths. The biggest living crocodile in captivity is an 18-footer in Australia. What? Although the biggest ever caught was a 20-foot saltwater crocodile Jeez. caught in the Philippines that died last February. What makes these things so dangerous? They are ambush masters in the water. A variety of colors lets them blend into their natural environment. They are able to hold their breath for hours and swim silently underwater up to their unsuspecting prey. On land, they may only be capable of sudden bursts of speed, but in the water, they can move with lightning quick reflexes and grab, then drag prey under. It is estimated 1,000 people are killed by crocodiles each year, most of them fishermen and people living beside huge rivers. Damn. That's quite a way to go, man. Just getting murdered by a crocodile. It's just... Can you even imagine that? Oh, man. Can you imagine your... You just bites your, your leg and your it's like, yeah. oh, I'm going to go under the water. I'm going to do... It's got hold of me now. I'm fucked. Yeah, I would just be really hoping I had a knife or a gun on that <laughs> then at that point because I would shoot that thing in the brain as many times as I could. Yeah. So maybe then it would be good to have guns if you were around mm. dangerous predators. But like if other, you're well, not like around, other, like other humans. Da- well, if you're not around dangerous predators, no, I think you just made the gun argument. Well, then maybe we need a dangerous predator zone for humans, and then right. you, and then the gun prison. people can go there. It's called prison. <laughs> well, and then that's a, yeah. There's there's safe human zones where you can, you don't have to have a gun because no one has a gun. Right. Right. But people then the argument is, what if you sneak a gun into no gun zone? Right. I don't know. Just stay away from crocodiles. Number three. Scorpions. Huh. Nice. 
Scorpions are among the oldest creatures to ever live on Earth. Thought by scientists to have evolved from sea-dwelling creatures that went on land, the scorpion has taken to land quite nicely, given that it has had millions of years to evolve and adapt. Today there are about between 1,300 to 2,000 different species of scorpions, but only 25 have a poison that is deadly to humans. However, hmm. not all scorpion stings are a guarantee of death. Some poisons just cause extreme discomfort and fever in the hardiest of humans. But others may experience paralysis, convulsions, and cardiac arrest. Around 1,000 to 5,000 people are killed by scorpions every year. Five, one, one to 5,000. That's a huge range. So that's that, that, I mean, range. Eh, that's a big range. But say, say we're 4,200. Those are a lot of people. Yeah, 4,000 people even getting <laughs> gazunded. <coughs> okay, so you're you're out, you're camping, right? Where are these people getting killed? I don't do it. I don't know. I think it's where folks live where there's like scorpion nests, you know, wherever that is. Mm. So if you have scorpion nests, you got to maybe not put your house right there or consider murdering all of the scorpions before putting your house there. But yeah. that's kind of a steep angle. You D know? scorpion the area. <laughs> but you got to be sure, and that is really brutal. You got to be really sure that if you want to murder every single scorpion to be in a place, is that really what you want to do? Do you want to be fighting the tide of scorpions as a full time job? No. <laughs> Just so you can maybe don't there. live there. Maybe yeah. you don't live there. Maybe put your house where there isn't scorpion nests. Okay. What's next? What do we got? Number two. We're at two already? Snakes. Snakes. There are so many snakes. And there are so many poisonous snakes. Yeah, what do you, how do you feel about snakes? I'm fine with snakes. But you can see a lot of snakes, you can see snakes being equated with evil all the way back throughout human history, the history of human uh, stories, myths, legends. You know, think about the dragon. This is why I said giant crocodiles are probably, giant uh, reptiles are probably our, our predators at one point. There was probably something like a dragon. That hunted us and killed us. And snakes, too. Well, an anaconda certainly could eat a human being. There's a lot of evidence that the reason we see in color is because we evolved to detect the coats of poisonous snakes. Really? Yeah. Some, there's some uh, researcher in Red and yellow stateback fellow? Within the past, like, five years, did a, did a study... And like our visual spectrum, and the visual spectrum of other chimpanzees, uh, correlated very highly to these certain snakes that um, that lived in the same areas. Hmm. So, like, study a pack of chimpanzees, they can see a certain spectrum of colors. They live in this area with snakes that have these colors in their coats. That was the basis of the study, and there was a strong correlation. And not many other animals see in color. So it's possible that we evolved to see the amount of color that we do see because of the environment, because there were poisonous snakes that would kill us. And so we learned to detect them by over hundreds of thousands of years expanding our visual spectrum. That's the argument. Huh. Jordan Peterson uh, talks that's, about it. That's cool. I like Peter that argument. Jordan Peterson. You know, I have a snake. Yeah. Leviathan, right? Uh, one of these episodes, I'll just bring her out here and show everyone to the audience. Yeah, live stream that shit. Yeah, I'll bring her out. I'll keep her out for a while. Um, her name is Leviathan. She's a Colombian boa constrictor, which is very general. I rescued her hmm. from a reptile shop in San Jose. She was like the size. What were they going to do with her? Well, she was, I mean, 
she was in a reptile shop. They were going to sell her is what they were going to do with her. Right. So I paid $80 for her and then bought a cage, terrarium and light. Mm-hmm. Some is mice. that all you need for a snake? You need a substrate, a water thing, things to climb on. You need it's a, like a simulated yeah, you jungle need, Yeah, you have to kind of set it up for what they would be into. You have to keep the humidity high. Is that right? Humidity is part of it. Depends on what kind of snake it is and stuff. And you just, you know, it's like a pool. Okay. if you have a big enough pool, it's sort of it's warm in there, and it, you know, so you can test all that stuff. You can test hmm. humidity and everything, and you can get really techy with it. Or there's just stuff that you can just get. So, I feed my snake live chickens now. Oh, you upgraded? Well, from she was mice? very, very very brutally injured by rats one time. Did we get a... Oh, yeah, we did get a chicken last time. That's right. They ate... Oh, this one rat ate something like 12% of her body. Like, ate it while she was alive. He, like, bit her that many places. It was terrible. And, I, you know, we nursed her back to health and everything's healed. You can't even tell. All the scars are... Because she sheds her skin so quickly. It's mm-hmm. like... It, you, you can barely see the scars now. Yeah. But it was like... It ate a considerable portion of my snake. And uh, that was a traumatic hmm. event for me. Definitely. How old was the rat? What kind it of was like it, it was getting? just barely an adult rat. Were these mafia rats? You know, I think like rats... Rats are, from the 20s, like, oh, you dirty rat. I think rats are like way Tommy smarter guy. than chickens. I think rats have such a wider experience and capability of suffering I think and chickens mental are, capacity. I think chickens are the dumbest thing. Yeah. Maybe so, the most evil, too. I don't know if those are related, but... Oh, they could they be. They seem the dumbest, most... Just There's just nothing in their eyes. When yeah. You look in there. It's like Michael Myers. It's reptilian. Eyes. Yeah. It's just nothing. You look in the dog's eyes and you can say, okay, the thing's clearly smart. You know, clearly has some level of intelligence. But not the chicken. Not the chicken. Not the chicken. So the the rat ate part of the snake and I said, we got to do something besides rats. And people like, we'll go frozen. And it's like, I think I've spoiled her too far. She's only eaten ever like one time I gave her a piece of chicken and she reluctantly ate it, but it's gotta be fresh. It's gotta be alive. And so chickens are cheap. A, a, like a like a teenager chicken is what she eats. It's like chicken like this big. Size. Ooh, you know what we could do? We could feed her on the show. Is there a time lapse? Well, we could do a we could put her in. We could, we could just bring lapse. a tank out here and put the chicken and the snake in the tank on the right. po- on the podcast. I'm down. That's the you know again nature is just murder it's just murder oh my gosh I it's pure <sighs> pure life and pure death snakes are blamed for an average of fifty thousand kills a year around the world while there while they while there are the occasional fatal bites on professional snake handlers snake charmers and other others involved in the Herptomological business for studies. Herptomological? Yeah. Herp- herptology is the study of snakes. Herpetological. Herp- herpetology? Mm-hmm. Business or studies. Most deaths huh. are from bites of snakes feeling threatened by human presence and activity. On top of the killer list is the Indian cobra. With many cities in India expanding Damn. land into land that used to be jungled, snakes have been forced to deal with ever encroaching human population and activity. So the Indian cobra is at the top of the list for murdering people, and snakes overall are blamed for fifty thousand kills a year. So snakes wow. kill fifty thousand humans a year. <sighs> Just wrap your brain around that. Fifty thousand. The average person makes around 50,000 a year. Mm-hmm. So imagine how much money you is that? Yes. Is, is a person dying by a snake bite. Happy thoughts here on <laughs> Empathy and Imagination. 
Well, we have to. We get to apply empathy and imagination to right, these right. topics. Yeah, yeah. So how do we? So this. How do we prevent these these deaths? Mm, there's some strategies we can employ. We could go. Maybe don't set up where the snakes live. Right. That's a one option, or like murder all of the snakes. That's another option. Not saying genetically pick engineer. that one. Regenetically tweak the scorpion or the snake, mm-hmm. so oh. it can, so it can still kill what it needs to kill, right? But it has no effect on humans. With CRISPR, like just CRISPRize, yeah, just CRISPR that, just snip that little bit out of the brain, so you can't, you know, just, just snip one piece out, put another piece isn't, in. Isn't there a danger? Grow there? Grow it to full size, done, and breed it. I imagine there'll be like a. Uh, this is probably already happening. A Noah's Ark of DNA samples, like just DNA records for every creature that exists, and then a, like a bank, you know, DNA bank, and then as we start messing with DNA, we'll just have more additions to the. It'll be like a library, a library of DNA, like a seed library, but a DNA yeah. library. Yeah, that's cool. I hope so. It's like, oh yeah, you want to? Oh yeah, remember those uh, scorpions? Those those went extinct. But, you know, you can just check out the DNA sample from the library and make your own. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Shit. You can just reproduce uh, extinct organisms. 3D print them. Fuck it. Just 3D print those things. Sheesh. Sheesh. All right, what do we got? Uh, can we have a drum roll or bubbles or something? Some, some, you, can you sing me? I just need something. <laughs> Mosquitoes. Huh. Actually, I already said that earlier, but yes. Yeah. You said they were on the list, but... It is estimated that between 660,000 to 1 million people each year are killed by the diseases mosquitoes carry. These diseases range from malaria to dengue, and many are often fatal if not treated immediately. Mosquitoes are present in all cultures in the world. They're even known to survive in harsh environments like volcanoes, craters, and Arctic regions. Mosquitoes have also been around for millions of years and are not going anywhere <laughs> anytime soon. Except onto your arm. So, Mosquitoes, how do you feel about 660,000? It's been determined that mosquitoes are migrating to your body next. That's a lot of that's a lot, man. They're just vampiric insectoid disease transmitters. Again, CRISPR. CRISPR those. They were talking about this. On the radio lab about the CRISPRs, we we spoke of this already. Where we take the mosquitoes, we CRISPR out the whole problem. Stop CRISPR part. those skeeters. We CRISPR the skeeters, fixed, done right. And there's two ways we can do. It's gonna go good. Okay, there's two ways we can do. It. One way we can do it where it's like the mom or dad gene. So when the mosquito reproduces, it'll either the gene will pass on or it won't. Or differently, mm. we could set up so that absolutely every genetic follower of this mosquito will have the gene. And that's mm. a difference. Right. Yes, and you could also make the toxin that they inject into you make it like some kind of vac- mega vaccine. So they so they're actually helping people. Like we crisper ourselves to accept the uh yeah. We could do, you know, like shield some kind of spring. arrangement where okay yeah okay I'm into that I'm an into arrangement that. where the toxin that they use to anesthetize the little patch of skin that they land on to get the straw sucker blade into you that toxin still does what it does but maybe it also gives you kick ass T cell boost or something 
like we could genetically engineer species and animals to be m more symbiotic, to encourage symbiotic relationships. Is there dangers there, you know? Yeah, of course. Probably a fuckload of dangers. <laughs> I don't like thinking it's about a, the it's dangers. Like building blocks. Of but I'm with you. I'm with you that it's like cool to think about what's possible there. Yeah. The build, anytime you're messing with the building blocks, it's going to be a high probability. Of, I mean, I mean, a you know, high chance of, a, of something going wrong. The gear room. Not of necessarily the a high chance, but there's, the, the stakes get higher. Right? Like deep genetic engineering or like deep AI or deep nuclear force manipulation. You start getting into like, yeah, we're getting a little farther in our knowledge, but the potential downside is just more, even more catastrophic than before. Yeah. You know, like nuclear power. Oh, there it is. There it is, yeah. Every time we continue, sure. as we continue through with science, it's like the questions become more amazing and more interesting. It's, it's like that in itself is sort of worth right. the quest anyway. And questions that were once amazing or answers that were once amazing are now commonplace yeah or untrue or partially true like oh yeah e equals mc squared so what right <laughs> i think a good place for the front page of the newspapers is like the leading edge of the grand unified theory question like where where are we in our, our pro closer it's been, approximations it's been going on for so long now uh, right I, mean, I, I don't i don't think there will be a grand unified theory probably not just like there's no smallest part of the of the atom mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. there's no biggest limit to the universe it just doesn't it's make like, sense oh, that may, maybe the universe is bounded well actually there's 14 other parallel universes and blah blah blah, blah. there's no there's no fi everything's a closer approximation there's no finite point at which things are perfectly understood for all time thank you Okay, square. That's just that's just what I think. I, mean, I don't know if that's true. That's a cool opinion, though. I mean, we are... Imagination would include opinions. Yeah. And it might be that Shakespeare is like the literate oh. version of that impossible-to-grasp thing. Hmm. He may have already charted out the limits uh, for, you know, current our current biological modern man selves maybe when the singularity happens or something Shakespeare will be there'll be another mega genius whose works will endure for 200 years you know written works I guess it's more like 400 years at this point hmm. um, but you know Shakespeare's his his work is like the Bible. It's kind of... Mm -hmm. Probably has yeah. the same amount of influence. Uh, hasn't existed for as long, but... Mm. Hasn't, hasn't existed for as long, but is still very influential. And it's not... It's just not going away. There's no escaping Shakespeare. There's no escaping him because we haven't caught up to him yet. And so, it would be cool to talk about Shakespeare, part one of an infinite number of Shakespeare episodes. His, yeah, it's hard to know where to start. I'm going to skip over all the controversy and history. I think this is episode 35, actually. Hmm. And so think about Shakespeare's influence. Now, whether or not Shakespeare is one person or committee, whatever, that that's sort of an irrelevant... That's an irrelevancy in this, this topic. Because the, the works endure, still. Mm -hmm. The idea is people are still doing Hamlet. Every year, right? Every um, year, m many times a year. Like, what other work is being performed that often and reinterpreted? Beethoven, 
Beethoven, probably it's probably Bible stuff, mm -hmm. religious things, ceremonies, rituals, plays. People are still performing Hamlet, and it's just an it's crazy how many things take their na their titles from Shakespeare. So here's a Wikipedia, right? Okay. List of titles of works taken from Shakespeare. And it's just, it would take me hours to read through this list. People inventing stuff that they titled something from Shakespeare? Yep. There's just, just rows and rows of it? Uh-huh. Uh, for example, music. Infinite Chess, okay, so it's, it's music and then categories under that are the plays, so music, Hamlet, Infinite Chess, album by We Are the Fury, The Rest is Silence, an album by Randy, This Mortal Coil, a project led by so-and-so, just on and on. So let's get to something a little more relatable, novels, right? Novels, short mm -hmm. stories, and nonfiction. Mm -hmm. Again, just picking Hamlet. And only picking people that you probably have heard of. Time Out of Joint by Philip K. Dick. To Be R Zero To Be by Kurt Vonnegut. Hmm. Mortal Coils by Aldous Huxley. Perchance to Dream by Robert B. Parker. Howard Weinstein, Star Trek Next Generation. And John Wyndham. Infinite, Je Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace, right? Star Trek Next Generation is Shakespeare? Oh, big time. Dude, it's the crossover between Star Trek, the old, and every every Star Trek series, and Shakespeare is huge. Well, the next, is that from Shakespeare's words, mouth? Perchance to Trek? Dream? Oh, not Star Trek. Star I was Trek. saying Star Trek uses Perchance to Dream. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. There's a ton of Shakespeare, Star Trek crossover. In the original mm -hmm. series, in TNG, you know, Picard's a total Shakespeare lover. Oh, totally. And he has Data acting out Shakespeare one time on the holodeck, remember? Mm -hmm. oh, and and Picard's not in character. He's just sitting there, uh, just, like, critiquing Data's performance. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I love that shit. It's the best. So his influence is huge. And just, this just goes on and on, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's so many things that take their names from Shakespeare. The Moon is Down, John Steinbeck. Let It Come Down, Paul Bowles. Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. The Sound and the Fury by William Faulkner. Those are from uh, Macbeth, quotes from Macbeth. Hmm. So it's just insane. It's the scope of his, of his influence. Sort of hard to grasp. Yeah, because, probably because he's infinite in his capacities. It's sort of like deistic. It is. I mean, he's like a secular, it's like the secular Bible, William Shakespeare. Mm. Because it sort of gives you the alpha and omega, the limits of human experience. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know about the relationships between men and... Hello? The relationships between men and women, Shakespeare. Do you want to know about intergenerational strife, like how kids relate to their parents and the feuds that all that that's in there Shakespeare mm -hmm. sexuality Shakespeare philosophy bam bam just everything is covered and it's almost again it's like the book of reality the complete works of Shakespeare <laughs> could be called the the book of reality and it's the closest contender to the Bible now Ooh. why would that be you know unless unless there's unless it's powerful art People are people must be motherfucker. So people giggles. must be relating to it. 
people must be relating to it if it's that popular. You know? That just seems logical to me. I think so. I think people hold things, literary works, into in like religious spaces. Totally. And I, I'm I'm probably even like by association, I'd say guilty of the same thing with nonviolent communication. Right. And it's interesting that we find these things and, and sort of assign them sort of um, like magical or higher order meaning, mm -hmm. and they don't contradict. It is right? it is totally fascinating how that happens. We just elevate and. Like, it may not be appreciated in its time, but then later it just is there forever. Like, that's, that is a weird phenomenon that humans do. Well, crazy, man, but it's awesome. <laughs> crazy, dude. Dude, Shakespeare story, hell yeah. And, uh, so that's... Uh, that's just a sampling of the list of works that have titles drawn from Shakespeare. Now, let's just look at Hamlet uh, in movies, right? Just a, a small subset of possible things. And it's just a huge list, I mean, of movies that have been made from Hamlet, right? The most recent one here is Hamlet, 2009. Uh, there's one in 2007, 2003, 2000, 2000, 1996, 1992. So imagine if, let's say, like your example, nonviolent communication, the book. Mm -hmm. Let's say 400 years from now, people were still talking about that book and widely <clears throat> talking about it and actually <clears throat> performing it and <clears throat> quoting it and their like books and TV shows that are named after quotes from it. Mm -hmm. You would probably be like, "Wow, that that book is pretty powerful." Yeah, it's huge true. influence. Why is it lasting four hundred years? People are still interested in these stories that are written in this archaic language about courts and kings and kings. Like, and you realize, well, it's not really about kings and it's not a history piece. It's not a period piece. It's not about uh, what kind of shirts people wore in Denmark. Hmm. Because the characters are timeless. The character of Hamlet, he could be he could be anywhere. He could be a drummer. Hmm. Doesn't have to be a Denmark, a prince of Denmark. Universal. Yeah. Hmm. So that's one of Shakespeare's things: is that when you read it, it seems completely alien to you because of the language. The language is old, but also he's innovating. Right. So it's kind of just unfamiliar but you still remit, as you read it you realize it's, it's sort of familiar you know what he's talking about it's not like totally encoded it just kind of sounds weird but you, you just get it you eventually get it you like catch up to what he's doing or at least you're, you try to catch up to what he's doing and you realize yeah for all the archaic language and the infinite complexity of the structures and I still understand what he's trying to say hmm. on the level I think the the level that's so important that that's why he enjoys a, a history of, of a legacy hmm. we still sing he's, songs of him he must have touched upon some truth for the enchantment with popular culture to go on this long. Yeah. That's all. Well, that's something big. That's something big, you know? I mean, I, it seems like you're not alone in that, in that Shakespeare's effect is widespread long-term. And yeah. I personally definitely felt, you know, whimsy in some of the stories <clears throat> I've read or seen or listened to. And I uh, am 
definitely like it, it's like I'm agnostic <sighs> to the deity of Shakespeare. It's like right, right. I'm not saying he's well. Know. Yeah, and my position is like maybe your maybe yours is the same or different, but like mine is like I'm seeing his works as like comparative to something like the Bhagavad Gita or Bhag. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I just mean in terms that. of popularity and influence. Oh, I mean me too. Yeah, yeah. So it's like then it it has this sort of effect in in a larger sense. So I'd say. I'm agnostic. Yeah. It's possible. And, oh, hey, you just, uh, we might have just lost the, the, uh, uh-huh. the audio feed. Yeah. It's all right. We still got the, uh, the live stream going. No big deal. What happened? Seems like it just went to sleep. Technical problems. Hey, there we go. There's, there it is. Disconnected. Huh? Technical problems. Disconnected. We plugged in for juice, huh? That seems to be... It was still going, though. <laughs> still getting a readout. Well, yeah. It's weird. got the... It's got the thing going. Wow, that's weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I'm going to stop. Right, ready? <laughs> no, you're not ready? I'm going to stop anyway. Okay, stop thing. <laughs> Don't ask why. <laughs> Little little window will come up and say nothing happened. Nothing went wrong. Just just letting you know nothing went wrong. Okay, okay, continue. Bye. Nice. Super fucking laggy. It's great though. It, wor- it does work. It's very laggy, but it works.
fly, fly my ass. <laughs> this is pretty cool. I'm trying to trying to switch it with me. Where are you talking? Yeah. Sometimes I forget though. So like I'll be just rambling and it's just a shot of you listening. <laughs> this is. Oh, Grace, you're fine. Oh, I know. Is the computer going? Computer's going. Hello. Okay, and thank you. It's um, now a word from our sponsor. <laughs> yeah, well, I just wanted to complete the Shakespeare thought. Okay. With Shakespeare, you know, my my whole point there is like, it seems like there can be truths embedded in art, and when art lasts a super long time, maybe there are truths embedded in that art. Sort of based on the length of its popularity? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe. Think about myths. Yeah. They've endured a long time. Think well, about the Odyssey. Archi- right? Yeah, totally. Archetypes. Why and... Why are we still telling that story if, it, if there wasn't something in it that spoke to us on a deep level? Like P- even Pinocchio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We still... Something, e. something about these... Right. E.T. is almost a, P- a Pinocchio story. Why are these stories so compelling and fascinating for all time? Or at least for a long time. Maybe because there's some truth there. So that's what that's all I'm saying about Shakespeare and you know. Cool. Truth can be embedded in stories and the popularity of stories may be an indicator of how much truth is in a story. Thanks. Nice. I feel like what do you got? I feel like we gotta sing now or something like. Okay, maybe a quick. Uh, I don't know. Quick word from our sponsors. Now it's time for a word from our sponsors. Mom, food's the best. Here, dude, what'd you do that with? Yeah. Final Corp. Final Corp. It'll be fine. I want to thank our sponsors, Final Corp, for writing sort for this episode. And we're very grateful for all their support. Of course, their products are available. You can purchase them at empathyandimagination.com. Final Corp. It'll be fine. And, and it will. Believe me, it will be fine. It will be fine. And we're we're back. back. Okay, so now it's uh, either time for another topic or we have a sounds good. Okay, I have a I have a kind of cynical. Ooh, let's do it. Thing. Let's do it. Um, I like to call this one. um, Well, maybe should I do the cynical one or the funny one? What do you think? How about can you do both? Can you do cynical and then funny? Right, one after the other. Yeah. Um, yeah, which one do you want? Cynical. Give it to us raw and then lighten up. Something, yeah. Something like that. Let me see this for a minute. Okay, so. 
I'm steering the ship. Oh, shoot. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Studio is okay. Good. Okay, cynical. How about that. You ready? Yeah. Go ahead. I know. I know. I know. You love to travel. Are good at parallel parking and have a picture of you jumping on your profile. So you're quirky and different. I know. I get it. My self summary. I am so utterly amazing, kickass, and mega that you won't even believe it. I can hardly believe it myself. I can talk about any book, movie, show, or album, even if I haven't read it, seen it, or experienced it. I'm that good. I'm intelligent and funny and talented, and I'm possessing of mad skills. I have a shitload to offer. I'm a man. That means I've had my ass kicked, kicked someone's ass, had my heart broken, broken someone's heart. I work hard. I'm in awe of certain art and lament that the earth seems to be nothing but a giant compost heap. From the stars we came to the stars we return, from now until the end of time. Big deal. I am a romantic and optimist. I am loyal and funny and smart and somewhat naive. I laugh at myself. I make progress. I like to look at, analyze, and think about both sides. Ask me about anything. I'll come up with a good answer. I like to advance on concepts. I'm great at pleasant surprises. I am not a Platonist, nor am I a pianist. Favorites. I adore Shakespeare, the horizon past which we cannot see. I like Hart Crane. Ask me about J.G. Ballard, Ernest Becker, Lotremont, or Volman. Ask me about Cronenberg, Kubrick, or Refn. Ask me about living in harmony. Ask me about Richard D. James, Stars of the Lid, Led Zeppelin, or Steely Dan. Ask me whether I believe in favorites. I spend a lot of time thinking about science fiction stories and characters. Adding to the list of books I want to read, chords and scales, big questions, philosophical concepts, first principles, thoughts themselves, improvements I can make in my life, directions, future possibilities. Thank you. Ooh, that was good. That was like the less cynical version. Okay, wow. That was the less cynical version? Yeah. Is there... Uh, okay. Let's breathe that in for a minute. Sort of let that sink in. Thanks for listening. Yeah, that was cool. It, uh... It, it seemed uh, genuine. That was sort of the objective. Try to write a, an actually genuine... Uh, dating profile, online dating profile, right? Mm -hmm. Not what people want to hear, but just an accurate version. Because mm. usually you don't write the accurate version. Usually. Huh. So there's a more cynical version? Yeah, but that's ne neither here nor there. This well, is this is kind of funny, though. Okay. Do the funny one. Mm -hmm. We talked about Star Trek earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, have you seen Star Trek First Contact? Uh, I Where think they so. meet the Borg. Yeah. The movie? And it's a movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, this is, a, this is a document that you give to someone about to watch that movie for the first time. Okay. You acknowledge the following terms before viewing Star Trek First Contact. One. Each of the main character has their own part, you know? It's such a common scripting element of Star Trek. There's a Geordi part, where he's in engineering, getting shit done. A Crusher part, where they're blathering on about medical preparations. A scene with Data, describing something to Picard with excessive precision, etc. Number two. The scene near the beginning with Picard in his quarters, blaring music so loud objects on the table are shaking in such an old is such over-dramatized bullshit. <laughs> there's a similar scene in Generations, by the way. Then Riker walks in and there's a Puccelli Figaro. 
exchange between the two a la Megaforce. It's, it, it needs to be watched to be believed. Number three, at about 24 minutes 40 seconds in, Picard looks like a foggy farmhand. Check him out. Number four, Riker's total Riker's a total ham job. It's unbelievable. It's like the Return of the Jedi syndrome. Who the fuck is this character they chose to name Riker in this movie? Certainly it doesn't correspond to the Riker in the television series. I don't know this man, I didn't come with this man, and with your permission, I'll be leaving this man. All the other characters are pretty much the same as they are in the television series, but not Riker. Number five. Zephram Cochran is pretty weak. The character is completely unconvincing for me. I like James Cromwell, but not in this role. It should have been just some guy. Number six. The coming into focus effect of the opening credits is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just oh read, I haven't read this in years. It's funny because I I can picture that the the credits like come into focus and then pass out of focus. It is very annoying. Uh, number seven, the Borg just aren't that scary. Number eight, perhaps something in satin says Picard after appraising Lily before they enter the holodeck. Implying Picard is a fashion aficionado, just as he's no doubt a talented musician and amateur archaeologist. <laughs> Number nine. Most of the writing is pretty limpid. Tropes from the show are recycled. Thank you, Data. And number one, you have the bridge, for example. Not to mention the ample serving of jar jargon prattling. In an attempt to anchor the viewer, and the new material is largely as corny as a cob pipe, with only a smattering of emotional engagement. Ooh. <laughs> I still like the movie, but those are all my observations of it. That's like terms of service. Mm -hmm. Before you sign up for something, you have to give someone that document before they watch that movie. Mm, that's someone cool. who's a Star Trek fan and like maybe hasn't seen that movie, you give them that document. And they're like, okay. It's like, it's a, like, pre it's like a prenup. <laughs> a Star Trek prenup. Prenup of spoilers. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, good job. I say. <laughs> I say good job. I mean, oh, that's I cool. So. I like. I mean, I liked it. Thanks. So it, I didn't hear any laughs, but thanks. your your um your OK Cupid account is this is this already uploaded uploaded to it? My OK OK cynical. Mm hmm. I don't have an OK Cupid account. Oh. But that was inspired by their structure. Mm. My self summary. I spend a lot of time thinking about, you know, headlines that I use. Okay, right on. Cool to clarify. Do you think I should use that as an actual program? Well, I mean, if you wanted to use a dating website to meet ladies and to be genuine, those would accomplish those goals if. But you'd have to want those things. Right. But you're saying that you think it would be effective. Mm hmm Cool. Yeah. I'd like to think so. <laughs> nice. Do you have it sounds good? I do have it sounds good. Um, and my... Today's been technically interesting, so there might be some more of that. Um, Make sure this is still going. So, sounds good. This might work. Is that Tim? Uh 
need a bassist. Sounds like you need a bassist. Is this you and Tim? Is this you and Tim? Oh man, is that you and Tim Goodspeed? That's correct. Nice, was that recent? Very recent, yeah. Sweet, yeah. sounds great. Man. Thanks. We were, you know, we, we do a lot of songs like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, covers? Uh, covers, originals, you know, we, we, do, we do a lot. And there's never enough Fucking time. Mad covers, dude. Do mad covers. We uh, there's we we add heaviness. Either he, he kind of belts. He sort of was yelling. You heard a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he's a good singer. He's great. And I had some double bass and you know. So yeah, it's yeah. like we sort of like update sure. it a little bit. Sounds cool, man. So there could be even we might even turn some other knobs more other directions and mm. stuff. Um. Makes me could want use to be a part of it. Yeah, could could use a bass player, basically. Basically could use a bass player. I honestly don't know what Tim how Tim feels about that. I have a I good guess. guess. I, I guess I have you could ask security him. about it. I could. Well what's your feeling? I just don't know. I mean uh what is my feeling there? It's almost like I'm enthusiastic about it, but I'm not sure. He and I are on the same wavelength. Hmm. And like there could, could be a discrepancy. It could be fine. Yeah. Uh, there's probably a big age difference there. Maybe some ideological. Maybe some ideological. There's a big. There's a big age difference there, and maybe some ideological differences. But okay. that, what, when it comes to music, that shit all falls away. Hmm. You know. So. That's my philosophy. Well then. We could get back, get cool. back to Dude. where we once belonged. Yeah, sounds cool. Sounds, sounds good. Sounds good, actually. Can we can we sing that out? One, two, three. Sounds good. What do we got? I don't know. <laughs> Shit. What do we got? I think I had something else. Let me just Shit. Shit. What do we got? Oh, what do we possibly... It's this, it's this XLR cable. Dang that cable, it out. man. We figured it's out the cable. We need, we need another cable. <laughs> that was the source of that buzz, too.
Oh yeah, I guess, you know, I, I actually covered everything I had there. Um, Shakespeare invented probably around 1,700 words, which is pretty impressive. But yeah, that's cool. Okay, what do you got? I mean, what is it? That's all I got. That's it? Wow, okay. You got something else? Uh, no. I mean, I mean, there's, there's always the, you know, the freeform thing. But uh, yeah, totally. There it is. Holy shit! What's going on? Is that me playing? Is that, is that you? That's you, yeah. It's funny because I'm just looking at a progress bar right now. Something is loading and you don't know what. Who? Like, subscribe, donate, share, Patreon, share, express Patreon, yourself, Twitter, Grinder, YouTube, Patreon, GoFundMe, Kickstarter, Cloud9, the support for the podcast comes from everybody else. parts of the imagination
Beautiful. Beautiful. Cool. That, you know, that's like the new way to play an instrument. Just Touching keys and screens. Touching keys and screens. Keys and screens. What is no it? more plucking strings. Just touching screens. Won't you join us to touch some screens? Oh, won't you join us to touch some screens? And maybe slide some mayonnaise onto food. Oh, no, it's me. What's that? It's this. Remember this? <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's cool. There's lots of it's stuff cool. on there. Okay, well, you know, this... Is that, I don't, was it, oh, it's, is it standard tuning? Because I could play along with it. But there's that fucking crackle. There it is. And we roll. Hmm. Huh, that was different. That's cool. <laughs> Dude. Uh, it's like a meta production. Real time meta production. Real time what meta productions. Dot com. Real time meta productions. Incorporated. Real time meta productions. Brought to so you by Final Any shout outs or any other thoughts there? Shout out to Final Corp. Shout out to all our listeners and all our buddies and all our friends and all our enemies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shit. Shit, man. Thanks to everyone. Yeah. Thanks to you, Aubrey. Thanks to thanks for you know having the studio and mm-hmm. hosting it every week. It's yeah. important, man. Yeah. Making it happen. Making it happen. Thanks again. Tune in next week. Tune in next week. This. 
has been the podcast for empathy. This has been the podcast for empathy and For the after show, okay. Now, if you're still here, you're part of the after show, okay. Uh, bonus content, bonus content. So, man, I'm really curious if this will work. If I hit stop, it's gonna say upload to server, and then you can say yes. So, I'm gonna stop this right now, okay. Good job.